Hello everybody, it's uh, Phil here from Telford Koi Pond with the latest instalment of my pond build. You might be able to hear a faint trickling of something in the background and I think the fact that there's a water meter on the side of the pond slightly gives it away. But believe it or not, we've actually started doing the big fill. Can't believe it, I can't believe how long it's taken to get here. So the pond's done, built, fiberglass, cured, rubbed down, checked, everything you need to do with a with a new pond after it's your fiberglass. So we're doing the fill, it's been it's been filled up and cleaned down properly. So this is this is the final fill now. We're on our way up. We're about probably just over a third of the way up, about a foot away from the first inlet or outlet as it will be. Um, it's forecast to dry day. So I'm out here with the filters filter the covers off I've got all the electrics out I'm just starting to plug everything in um, so happy days we're finally here at last I'll just let this fill up for a bit and do a bit more pottering over there and then I'll um, I'll catch up with you and show you where I'm up to so back again with another quick update uh, it's been a while since we started the water running which you would have seen first thing this morning the water meters currently saying 5.6 cubic meters so I'm, I'm expecting it to be 12 uh, ish so we're sort of halfway we're not quite up to the um, the inlet where the skimmer is going to be uh, sucked in from once I put that in uh, and we've still got a bit of way to go to the venture return but uh, yeah it's, it's filling up nicely slowly does it it's still dry which is a bonus although I've just got soaked with the rain blowing off the top of this cover when I was standing there but uh, let me show you where we are in the filter bay where I've got to with the filters so you will have seen most of the plumbing on the uh, the last video so you'll know that everything's connected up we've got a four inch ball drain coming from the sorry ball, ball valve coming from the bottom drain and we've got a two inch coming from what will be the uh, skimmer in pond skimmer we've got the main waste in place and I'm just waiting for a couple of boots to put the um, the waste for each one of these uh, each one of these in place and then they'll just run into the drain so all the waste will be running into the drain it will literally just be a case of pulling valves or obviously that doing it automatically um, I've just put this on here for the simple reason that I've just got soaked by water coming off this top it's not quite long enough obviously that's not a, not a permanent fixture so we are all there uh, we are all plugged in basically and all the electrics are in so let me take the cover off so yeah as i say everything's plumbed in the uh the drive motor all the electrics the um pump for washing the screens off the detector valves everything's plugged in i have turned it on for a split second just to see if it lights up and it does so everything is by way of these uh, weatherproof connectors which is really good and it, it literally is plug and play this unit comes in the box separately all these wires are, in, are already connected in, in here you just literally unravel them i've just put it around the back of the unit and, and just, they, just, they just tie in with these things they're great so that was that was a piece of cake you know this was already connected to the individual unit at the end and I have finally took the plastic cover off you'll be pleased to know so no more comments about that thank you yes I knew I had to take it off at some point and there's the individual unit so we've got the, uh, the UV electrics and the pump way down there they go around the back um, obviously this, this will all be tidied up I've just uh, kept them off the floor by putting them on there for now but they're all in the electrics at the moment the uh, controllable pump so obviously that just clips off and it turns the pump up and down to whatever speed you want whatever capacity you want and again plug and play plug it in tighten it up bob's your uncle and again i've turned that on very quickly just to see if it powers up so that really is it i mean obviously i've got the uh, I've got to put the two air pumps in which i'll do next but in terms of the actual filters we are sort of ready to go now we're just waiting for the water levels to uh, to fill up i'm going to fill the pond up 
and keep the um, stop valves closed just to make sure that they work and then obviously once I've established that they work I'll open the valves up and we'll put the water into the filters and then we'll, uh, we'll get the exciting job of turning them on so that's it again that's where we are at the moment um, it is just a waiting game now for the water so uh, give it an hour perhaps a couple of hours perhaps three hours um, and we'll come back and see what else I've done so catch you in a bit uh, so just while we're waiting for the pond to fill up we had a delivery um, that I fitted up last weekend which I um, just haven't had a chance to film yet due to a, a number of uh, personal reasons but anyway we're going to film it now and uh, show you what we had arrived so come this way and there she is the 12 kilowatt Thermatec heat pump so I'm really really pleased with that um, the original intention was to actually put it down by the, um, the edge of the filter house down that dead corner there and have it face that way um, we could put it in it just about fits and obviously we could give the required um, distance at the front and back but the sides were just um, I'd, I'd gone a bit tight to be honest there would have been no clearance at the sides at all and particularly with the uh, the condensers and everything on that side I think, you know the book says you need 700 mil so that's uh, yes, right 700 mil so uh, so I'll put it here so it's on a concrete base as you can see a concrete base being a concrete slab that's actually concreted in and leveled and um, I ordered the uh, plug and play cable as well um, just a note um, about the plug and play cable uh, you get the right bits, don't get me wrong, and they're all good quality bits, but it isn't plug and play in so much as you've still got to wire it into there and the plug comes separate, so you've still got to wire your plug in. Um, the other thing that I've got slightly wrong is because I'd intended to have the heat pump up there, I ordered the 5 metre cable to give me plenty of room. It's about 10 metres up there, so... Uh. Um, we've got temporary power in here at the moment, so I can get it running today, and I've got an extension... Um, and waterproof connectors booked in but um yeah i mean it's not it's not actually on yet because I, I don't want to turn it on until the water's going through it or anything but um i'm sure you would have seen there uh, righty's videos and koi pond plants and, and rants in their their, their run throughs of the thermotech it really is a fantastic bit of kit i should put some pictures up on the of uh, when we had it and how well it was packaged because it, it comes really really well packaged and um, probably going to take me two weeks to get rid of the cardboard but i'd rather it be well packaged um, and that's it that that is the that is the beast all plumbed in so if you want to wear uh, this is the only problem i'm going to have now is just this little uh, restriction through here but bear in mind this is going to be a bit of dead space so what you can see the long pipe run is obviously the uh, pipe coming out of the end of the filter so that that outlet is split into two one goes into the pond uh, through the venturi in the midwater return if i want it to and then the rest of it comes through here this is the feed into the into the um, air source heat pump at the bottom and then I don't know whether you can get uh, pictures of the back there's a bypass system in place so under normal operating conditions it just goes straight into the bottom does whatever it does in the heat pump and then out through the top round here and then down and then out through uh, the mid water return which you will have already seen in the pond in, in the building stage uh, and if I'm not running it through the air source heater or if I want the air source heater taken off for servicing or whatever um, then all I simply need to do is close the two slide valves sorry slide valves, ball valves, top and bottom and open this one and then obviously the water then will come along here, up here and basically bypass the um, heat pump so all these blocks of wood are obviously very tempy at the minute going to get that all clipped up properly uh, and then basically this whole area is going to be obviously these will be insulated then the whole area is just going to be filled with gravel we're not intending to have much here it's obviously space for me to keep uh, nets and koi bowls and all that other good stuff that we all uh, need during our time doing this hobby uh, and I think my good lady wife's got plans for hanging baskets and all sorts on the back so that'll be fantastic when it's done but yeah you know really really good bit of kit um, where I got it from brilliant um, you know it's, they're, they're expensive but at the end of the day if you if you sort of take the hobby seriously if you want to keep your pond 
heated all year round. If you want to try and avoid some of the pitfalls of the of the winter break, then you know, I suppose it's, it's one of the things you've got to do. Um, some of you might comment that I've, I've got the 12 kilowatt heater when the 9 kilowatt heater, according to the um, specification, is perfectly adequate. Um, and yeah, it absolutely is. But I was speaking to the uh, the chap that was advising me. And I don't think it was just sales talk, but you know, talk, taking into account where we live, how open we are, the really cold winters that we can get. Um, I've just I've just gone up in a little bit bit of power, so hopefully the uh, the extra money spent on the unit will be back in terms of you know how the inverter kicks in and how much less it has to work to uh, to get the temperatures right. So that's what I'm going to tell myself, and that's what I'm telling the good lady wife. So there you go. Hope you like it. As I say, it's all in, it's all in position. I'll obviously um, we'll do the grand turn on of everything once the uh, once the pond water's filled up. So can't wait. Right, I'll leave it there, and I'll uh, again I'll come back to you when the when the pond's filled up. Speak to you in a bit. Back again, uh, just for the next update. It's uh, it's going to be a long day today. It's like the proverbial watching and waiting for the kettle to boil. Um, we are at. 7.3 cubic meters at the moment. Got my maths wrong earlier when I said we needed to get up to 12. I think it's 10 point something. So, you know, we are we are three quarters full. Um, the mid-water return for the air source heat pump is well under water now, and the um, the pipe up this end for the in-pond gravity um, skimmer is under water, and the bottom return there is under water as well. So. Pipe works starting to fill up now. I've got the two um, air pumps connected. They are only temporarily connected at the minute until I decide where I'm going to put the property. But everything's plugged in, everything is ready to go. Just waiting for this to get right up to the top, and then I'll open the valves on the um, on the filters, and we can see the water coming in. And then obviously we'll uh, we'll keep checking for leaks, and then start turning things on. So hopefully the next uh, the next video clip's going to be. Uh, Bit more interesting so i'll come back to you in a bit cheers hello again folks um a lot later than it was last time but we've just turned off the water to the main pond so i'm filling the pond up in isolation so i get the true reading of the pond before we go and let any uh, water into the filters um, and unbelievably I've, I've just come out as it changed to 11 cubic meters of water so 11 cubic meters of water what an easy <laughs> what an easy thing to be able to remember now obviously that will go up further in a minute um, but that's that's the finished water level um, can't believe the amount of seeds and pollen on top of the water at the minute but hopefully the skimmer will uh, do its job once we turn it all on so um, I think the next thing to do is we'll see if the bottom drain aeration works so I'll turn that on first and then I'm going to open the valves and let the water through into the uh, into the filter bays. So if you just bear with me for two seconds, if you want to have a look at the uh, the bottom drain, I'll I'll turn the air on and see if that works. Magic. Let's go get rid of all the uh, water in the pipes, I suppose, first. Means this is the first time it's been run. That's an interesting, uh, it's like a big mushroom cloud, isn't it? So taking advice and watching other people what they're putting on their bottom drain, I went for the um, Jacquard 30 litres pump. So that seems to be doing the right uh, right thing at the moment. Obviously there's there's probably still water in there, so it needs to clear it out. So it's probably not running. Yeah, there's another there's another bubble. So it's probably not running true yet. But I'm just going to leave that running now, and then we'll um, we'll go into the filter bay and uh, start flooding the filters. So just get the uh, covers off first. Wow. So that was an 
as expected, that one's full. Mm. And in that one. So my plan hasn't quite worked. So I've obviously left one of the valves open. I've left that valve open so it's coming through the back end. Yeah. So the, the advantage is that we've uh, we've got everything full. So I'm just going to uh, have a quick look. I tested the drum earlier, so the drum rotates on its own. Yeah, it's all looking good. So I'm just going to go through and check all the pipes now. Just make sure there's no uh, there's no leaks anywhere before I start turning things on, and then I'll start turning things on. So I'll uh, I'll catch you in a bit. So things with the fill up didn't go quite to plan. Um, the intention was to fill up the pond in its entirety, isolating the uh, filter chamber, so I knew exactly how much was in the pond, and then obviously I'd fill it up and know exactly how much was in the filter chambers. Um, Schoolboy error left one of the slide valves open so basically it filled the, ch filled the uh, filters up as well so mm -hmm. um, the good news from my perspective I was hoping the pond was going to be around 2200 gallons um, but it's 11.230 cubic meters anyway it works out to 2470 gallons so as far as I'm concerned that's two and a half thousand gallons which is absolutely spot on um, so this is where we are I have read this until it's nearly worn out. In fact, this is a photocopy because I didn't want to spoil the original. Um, I've gone through all the checklist. So, um, I mean, it is it is quite simple, really. It, you know, it's, it's the way they design these things, even an idiot like me can set them up. So there you go. There's actually stickers on the inside. You probably won't be able to see this, but it actually tells you the maximum and minimum water levels. So it's uh, it's just here. So as you, see, you can see, I am absolutely spot on the top level. I've got the um, fail safe for the filter pump level set. I've got the um, cleaning pump set. Everything's basically set as per the manual, spot on. So, um, it's the moment of truth really. I can't put it off any longer. It needs to uh, start turning things on. So. I'm just going to start. Um, I don't quite. I can't remember which which ones which ones which to be honest. So let's uh, let's start flipping a few switches and see what happens. Okay, so that's the air for the uh, moving bed. That will certainly keep things moving. On. Yep, I can hear the kicking into action. So there's the pump in here. You can feel it vibrating. Yep. Uh, UV. Yep, the little blue lights just come on top of the UV, I don't know if you can see that or not, put the UVs on. And that's the main control panel. So it should be showing error 11 and that's because the top's off which is a default uh, situation which is good so I'm just going to shove some of the pellets so this filter comes with um, 60 litres 320 litre bags of helix 13 by our medium I was going to set this in PP a lot, lots of people have suggested but it uh, happens and that's because I you know I've only got five fish in the garage and they're, uh, they're, they're not that big anyway so that no doubt is going to float like mad for a, a week or so I'm 
just going to put the other stuff in as well. And obviously I'll put some uh, filter bacteria in as well. In for a penny, in for a pen. Might as well do the last one. So I've heard nothing but uh, good reports about this stuff, so hopefully it will, uh, it'll do the job. So this is how you've got to look after five uh, little koi at the minute. There you go. Happy days. Put the covers back on. Hopefully when we put the cover back on this one here, every message will disappear. And it's telling me the water's at 12 degrees. And what I'm desperate to do is press the clean button. And hear it go off so fingers crossed I can't do it <laughs> yep yeah, see the water coming out the discharge there out of the waste And then it was cleaned. I think the default setting is 10 seconds, something like that. So to be honest, as long as I know it's working, that's uh, that's good enough for me tonight. Um, obviously, bedtime reading will be all of this clean economy. No idea. But that's it, it's finally all set up after all this time. As I say, I shall, uh, I'm going to leave it running overnight, everything seems to be working. I've obviously got to go and turn the air source heat pump on and set that to a, a decent temperature. Get it up to the same as in the garage, which is 16 and a half degrees, I'll go and do that next. Um, but as I say, everything seems to be working, I've gone around and checked all the pipes before I turned everything on. So obviously I'm going to go around again now it's got pressure going through the pipe and double check and triple check for, for any leaks or anything. Uh, the skimmer's working so I can see there's, be, there's pollen being pulled into the skimmer. So I haven't got that turned on fully at the minute. Um, I just want to see how it floated basically now it worked but you can clearly see there's pollen in there so that's good. And the bottom drain air pump is still working anyway, so that's fantastic. So, again, I'll shall, uh, spend the next half an hour double checking and triple checking everything, make sure everything's alright, and then leave it running till tomorrow. And then if everything's, uh, if everything's still alright in the morning, um, I'll have to see about getting the fish in here. So, uh, so that's it from the filter house at the minute really pleased with this fantastic bit of kit really chuffed so i'll obviously do a follow-up but we'll just nip over to the um air source heat pump and uh, i'll show you that being turned on as well so here we are heat pump ready to go so what happens touch wood everything else has gone really well power on how to be we have ooh, we have a colored screen uh, it's telling me the water's 12 degrees at the minute.
wonderful. If I knew what to do with all this, it'd be great. So I think, I don't think I want it set to 27 degrees. I do only want it on heating. I don't want it on uh, cooling as well. Uh, so I want it on 16 degrees. So say all I'm trying to do is get up to the same uh, temperature as the fish already are in the garage. And I think that's it. almost seem too complicated but I shall double check the book I'm presuming you know, I have to, I've had to feel that to check that it's actually on I can't hear anything that is so quiet mm. Yep, great stuff. So we'll leave that and let it do its thing and then uh, see how long it takes to, to get up to 16 degrees and I'll, uh, I'll report back with an update. Thanks everybody, I appreciate you, uh, you watching all this. I, uh, it's been a bit of a busy day, it's been very stop start waiting for the uh, pond to fill and everything but uh, it's working, we're here. It's all it's all up. So thank you for bearing with me, and hopefully there'll be a bit more, uh, a few more more exciting videos with fishing next time. So thank you very much. Stay safe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.